I started the Palestine Children's Relief Fund 20 years ago, uh, my main objective and my purpose was at that time was to do something positive for Palestine and for the people here. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a businessman, I'm not a politician. So the avenues that we have as people who want to contribute to civil society and to do something for those who are suffering under occupation could be conceived as limited. And, but let's not uh, limit our imagination. There are ways to be involved. And when I started an organization that was placing children outside for free medical care, um, what I found was there were thousands of people just like myself looking for ways to be involved and to have direct human contact and support for Palestine, and particularly for the children of Palestine who are, during the first intifada when I started over 20 years ago, were being injured and killed and marginalized by the Israeli occupation authorities um, by the hundreds and thousands. And I was inspired to do something for them. And what I found is that there were thousands of people outside who were inspired to help, just like myself. And starting an organization that placed kids outside for free medical care um, enabled and empowered Palestinians and people all over the world who care about Palestine to get involved and to have a direct human contact um, with these kids and, and to play a positive role in their lives and to help heal. And by healing these children, we also feel that we're contributing to Palestine and to the struggle here, the struggle which is a human struggle for peace, for justice, for equality, and for freedom. These are human needs, human values that we all share regardless of your religion and your nationality. Well, I would like to tell you three stories this afternoon, and I'll be quick, about three people who have inspired me to continue and to dedicate my life to Palestine and who have made an impact and who have saved lives of Palestinian children through their selfless acts and through their dedication and through the support for Palestinian children. The first story starts six months ago, just uh, when we, as an organization, we've sent over 60 teams last year of volunteer doctors and nurses here, and we've treated over 10,000 Palestinian children in the last 20 years when I first started PCRF. And by bringing teams here, you're not only treating kids directly in Palestinian hospitals, you're training doctors, you're building infrastructure, you're building capabilities, and you're providing direct support for children within the local healthcare system. And you're also showing a level of solidarity for the people here who feel, in many cases, particularly in Gaza, isolated and cut off, neglected, ignored, and that's not the case. All of you feel a love and support for Gaza. Well, six months ago, we had this team of doctors from Italy in Rafidia Hospital in Nablus, and they were here to do pediatric neurosurgery, which is you know injuries to the brain and to the spinal cord for children. And we were seeing so many kids that day, kids who are coming in with uh, all kinds of serious problems, which uh, you know they couldn't be treated within the local healthcare system, because in Palestine there isn't a single pediatric neurosurgeon. There's neurosurgeons, but not pediatric neurosurgeons. So this team came as volunteers from their homes, from their families, from their work here to Palestine to help treat our kids. And we saw so many kids that day. They come in one after the other. You examine their medical reports, their files, their CT scans, and you decide whether they can, you can treat them or you can't. And then the rest of the week, you have one day of screening. The rest of the week, you start operating, and hopefully you can treat as many kids as possible, and you can tr work with local doctors and nurses and upgrade the standards, and hopefully one day everybody will be independent and they can do their own kids here. Well, one, the first kid we saw, or one of the children, which wasn't the first, but one of the children we saw was this beautiful little six-year-old girl named Ola Abu Jamus from the Tokaram refugee camp. And Ola came into the room after we were so tired and it was such a long day and it was a hot day and uh, brightened it. With, she just brought so much energy with her infectious smile and with her personality and uh, her spirit. And, uh, you know, we were so tired and immediately she energized it with, with this, as you can see, she's a beautiful child. Um, but the, the, the energy of that room was deflated and left when the doctors put up the CT scan and they saw this tumor in the back of her head, this, this cancerous tumor. Um, and the doctor, the surgeon, the Italian surgeon, Professor uh, Lorenzo Genitori from Florence said, you know, if we don't operate on this girl within a month, she's going to die. And I can't operate on her here in Rafidia because this hospital doesn't have the intensive care and the capabilities for me to do it. We need to send her to my hospital. And I can't take her as a charity case because our organization, we arrange treatment for free. We don't pay for it. We don't have the resources to pay for it. He said, we have to pay for it. This is an urgent case. I can't do it. We've, we've exhausted all of our charitable funds. So all of us looked at each other and said, oh my God, what are we going to do? We have one month. And the money for doing this type of operation, as you can imagine, in Italy is not cheap. And with us that day as a volunteer was a young uh, volunteer who was volunteering with us, a young lady named Sarah Rafai, who is teaching English in uh, Nablus and uh, is, uh, is a friend of mine. 
and decided to come that day and say, I want to help out. This is something I want to do. I, she's half Palestinian, half Lebanese. Came from outside to teach English, but she also, you know, feels very strongly about serving her people here and serving the cause directly. And so she was on computer, you see her in the background, and uh, helping out, and she saw Ola, and she, and she was so taken by this girl's story and, and the urgency of Ola's situation that Sarah started a campaign on Twitter, on Facebook, and on her blog called Nabla Story to raise money to enable us to send Ola outside for free care. And with Sarah's energy and passion and determination, she enabled us to raise the money in a very short period of time and to, save this, to send this girl with her mother and later her father to Italy for surgery, which she otherwise couldn't get. And this saved Ola's life. And you know, the one thing I want to do, I want to bring Ola out here for a second because it's important for us to see. You know, you hear all the time the bombings and the uh, killings in Gaza of our kids. Stand the show. Ola, six months later, Ola is completely cured. The tumor is gone. She had cancer. They gave her radiation therapy. They gave her chemotherapy. She's completely cured, thanks to Sarah Rafai and her efforts. Sarah's here today. Now, the reason I brought Ola out here is because you need to see, we need to see, we need to be reminded. Because every day we hear about Palestinian kids in Gaza being killed, or Palestinian kids in the West Bank dying from the lack of access to adequate health care, or Palestinian kids being injured. And we sometimes forget, I sometimes forget, I work here on the ground, in the camps. Sometimes I forget, these are human beings with families, with smiles, with laughter, with spirits. And only by interacting with these kids and remembering that they are real people, not obituaries in the New York Times, or statistics in the Associated Press. There are real live human beings. That this, this energizes us and inspires me to keep working and to de dedicate my life to serving the cause of peace and justice here in Palestine. So I'm gonna do something, and this might turn into a comedy show because the only person in all of Palestine who can understand my Arabic is my 14-year-old daughter, Dima. So I had to bring her out here to translate from Arabic to Arabic for Ola. Daib, Dali. Yalla Dima, Ola, Kif Halik. Bene. Is she a smekinti? Ola. A deshamra kinti. Sittisni. Mashallah. Inti min win? Min turkarim. Min turkarim. Mashallah. Taib. There's one thing Ola wants. You know, when kids go to these countries, and I see this all the time because we bring so many kids to the States, we've sent over a thousand kids like Ola abroad for free medical care. She's one of the few that we had to pay for. They always learn language so quickly, unlike me. And, uh, you know, she now speaks a little bit of Italian. And this. She wants to say this to uh, Sarah. She wants to say this to the family of Vittorio and to the people of Italy, her doctors, and to all of the people who enabled us to save her life. She wants to say something in Italian. Yeah, like, tu, 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 grazie. Grazie. Mashallah. <laughs> Shukran habibti. Yalla, masalam. Shukran. Yalla. Alive and well. God bless her. God bless Sarah. The next story I want to tell you is, uh, it's going to be a short video. And, you know, we send kids outside. And this empowers the Palestinian community, empowers the non-Palestinian community. Because people, when you see these kids and you have a chance to help them, it really gives you a sense that you're contributing to this struggle. This is a struggle. It's a human struggle. It's not a violent struggle. It's not a, a struggle that is just political. Ola's alive today because people came forward and helped her. And there are so many examples and inspiring ways that we can be involved. Everyday people. I'm just a dude from Ohio, like Sam. And, uh, well, Sam's more than a dude. He's a great man. But I'm just a dude. <laughs> Sorry, Sam. And, uh, you know, there's ways that we can help. So I want to give you a chance to see this. And, uh... <laughs> بدي أسير أمشي زي الأولاد والعاب وافرح معهم. We wanted to be a host family right uh, from the get go. We realized right away that it's a really worthy cause. It's been actually a nourishing experience for me and my family. 
whatever problems we go through here in the U.S. are are dwarfed compared to what the people are going through in Gaza. That's true. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, I should have introduced her. That boy was 12 years old. His name's Abdullah Al Thamna from Beit Hanun in the northern Gaza Strip. In 2006, his family was sleeping, and an Israeli tank shell hit their home in the middle of the night, 3 a.m. 17 members of his family were killed, including his mother and brother and sister. Abdullah lost his leg. But through the determination and the support of our organization and with so many volunteers, that we came forward and we were able to treat this boy. And you can see George Abu Hamid said, our, our problems, whatever we suffer in our life, the hardships are nothing compared to what these kids in Gaza and in occupied Palestine have to endure. And we have to remember whatever minor things that are, we have to endure as human beings, these kids have it much harder. And we have an obligation and a responsibility to help them and to support them any way we can. God bless George and his family. The third story I want to tell you, and I'm going to be quick here. Um, I just want you to take a look around. We turn the house lights on and see how many people are here this afternoon. I'm thinking 500, 600, maybe 1,000. I'm not sure exactly. And each one of you, each of us, has our own story. Like Ola, we have our own story, our own spirits, our own hardships, our grief, our love. You know, we're each individuals. And we all have so much to look forward to in our lives. Well, there's one man here this afternoon who has, with his own hands, saved the lives of over 600 Palestinian babies with congenital heart disease. And this man is a great man. Dr. Alan Kerr from Auckland, New Zealand, has come to Palestine as a volunteer. <laughs> Never once getting any compensation, he's come to treat our kids, working thousands of hours, not only to save the lives of over 600 Palestinian children, but to build a program in Palestine by training doctors and nurses, which in the future, Palestinian doctors will treat Palestinian kids in Palestinian hospitals without anybody having to help them or support them from outside. That's part of our long-term process. But in the meantime, saving 600 lives, each one of these kids has parents, grandparents, brothers and sisters. Dr. Alan Kerr himself has impacted over 10,000 lives. I can't even comprehend how many people are affected when you save the life of one child and then add it by 600. I'm going to, Dr. Alan is here uh, on his 25th mission in the last 10 years to Palestine, 25 times from New Zealand. Imagine how long a flight that is. With Dr. David Buckley and Warren Naren, who are also here for several times. I'm gonna ask them to stand up so we can acknowledge them. Warren, Alan, David, come on guys. I only got four minutes here. There they are. These guys are true heroes. And whatever acknowledgement I can give them is never enough to pay them back for all of the hardship and suffering that they've endured at the airport, at the borders, in the operating theater, um, just trying to serve our cause, which is a cause, as I said, of peace and justice and freedom and tolerance and equality among all of us. I work in Gaza. And I go to the camps in Janine and in Shatila camp for our brothers and sisters in the diaspora. And we're going to continue to work with courage because humanity requires courage. And our service for Palestine is based on the, role of the, the value of humanity because this is a cause of, hu of justice and freedom and equality. And those who employ violence and hatred and fear and racism and support occupation and intolerance, we will defeat them. How? By love and compassion and by working. And what the examples of Alan Kerr, Sarah Rafai, George Abu Hamid, and the thousands of people who support the PCRF and all of us who are working for the cause of justice and peace here in, peace here in Palestine, we are stronger than those who have hatred and violence in their hearts. Keep working, keep struggling. Our role is to help kids like Ola and to help Palestine one day to be free. And that's what I've dedicated my life to, and that's what thousands of more of you should be working for. So thank you all for this opportunity. God bless you.